Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Our next guest is someone who I had the pleasure of meeting back in May at the Port Morris School Career Day, where she was no doubt teaching the children there about the importance of healthy nutrition. Welcome to the show, Chef Ileana Manganello. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I gotta say, I love saying your name, and I have to say it this way all the time, <laughs> you right? Totally it's do. so, it's so epic. Eliana Manganello, right? It's like you were like Not sort of like. Not a lot of people put that much oomph into it. It sounds like you were like <laughs> literally born a chef, right? With that, with that. Thanks uh, to my husband, I guess. <laughs> that fabulous name. Yeah, at first I was like, wait a minute, the two flags on her Instagram account—they no. don't look like a Manganello to me. No. So, um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. Uh, I'm so I'm so excited to have you here. I mean, I'm excited to be here all the time, yeah, but I'm excited to have I'm you. I'm sure. Um, so I I uh, I noticed your account. A little while ago, I had mentioned this to you before, I had wanted you on the Foodie Down Bronx panel, but by the time that we had everyone say yes, there were so many people that had said yes that I was like, no one's gonna get their time to shine. Right. And so I never got you know, to reach out to you, but then we sort of bump into each other about a month later at the Port Morris School I where we know. had this career day. And I, I walked into this room and I recognized you right away and I was like, I think that's, I know that's, that's her. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we're here now, and, and thankfully we, we connected. So I want you to tell me about your Instagram page, what it is that you do, and also I realize that you are in the Throgs Neck area. I am. Which is my old hood. Yes. So can you tell me more about, uh, I also want to point out the fact that you are a wellness educator I as am. well. So I'm assuming that day at the Port Morris School you were telling kids about reading nutritional labels yeah. and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So can you tell me, what the initiative is behind what you do on Instagram and the sort of programs you're involved in? Because I see a lot of activity happening on your IG. Yeah, so my Instagram basically started just, I wanted to bring awareness um, to families. Mm -hmm. More, you know, I, I have, have a four-year-old at home. And it wasn't until that becoming a mother that I really realized that kids are not as disconnected to their food as, adults make them seem mm -hmm. um it's always been a oh just give them whatever or they don't really care about what they eat but they do and and i started to volunteer with a lot of organizations that were going into schools one of them was being bubble mm -hmm. um it changed the name now um but we would go into charter schools once a week and we would teach them something different every week and we had a garden in the classroom and it was like a six to eight week program. And every week it was something different. And they would remember everything. And they were kindergarteners up to first, second grade. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like mm -hmm. they really know what they're talking about, you know? Right. And they, they remember it, they retain it. They know what they like, they know what they don't like. And one of the biggest things I realized going to Bronx schools is that they're not exposed to things. Right. They are not exposed to the different produces that are available. They're not, they don't, you know, they don't understand what it is to eat seasonally or to when, you know, just how to properly pick a produce. So that's what we would teach them. Mm -hmm. um, we would create these menus that were seasonally based. Um, we would grow herbs and fruits that they can grow in their classroom with just a little heat lamp and they would be amazed at what they can do and that's when I really started to get into working with kids mm -hmm. um, and it was really just it became a passion of mine because they are so passionate about it and they love it. And when they take it home and they would tell me, oh, I told my mommy I tried this, she'd be like, what's that, you know? <laughs> right, right. And then I realized that it starts at home. You know, it, it's a whole, it's not just the kids because if they're going home and their parents aren't remembering or knowing, then it's a whole community-based thing. You know, right. it starts at home. So then I started my Instagram and that's when I started just kind of giving food facts and recipes and showing what I would make for my four-year-old mm -hmm. and show them that they do enjoy it. You know, it's not just a chicken fingers, grilled cheese, pizza type of diet that you should be giving your children. I agree. I agree. I, I, you know, I don't even have kids, but I've, I've noticed that with, 
certain kids in my family, in most families, I think, it's like people opt for the, the quick meal, right? Just because the, you know, their kid is hungry or mm -hmm. whomever, so they're just like, here, eat this, and it always reverts mm -hmm. to like really the worst of the worst, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you just look at kids' menus, every kid's menu in a restaurant right. is either pizza, chicken fingers, french fries, Pasta. Right, which I am completely guilty of, of loving, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, but, uh, but so why do you think that is? Why do you think there's this, I mean, you know, look, again, I can't, I can't understand what it is to be a parent, but I understand that time is of the essence when you're a parent and, you know, you, you maybe don't have the time during the day mm -hmm. to prepare a full meal, mm -hmm. but what's the advice you would give to parents who just don't know what to do? Because I think a lot of people are stuck in a rut. They want to break out of the sort mm -hmm. of unhealthy eating thing, mm -hmm. but they just don't know what to do. So they just, you know, they, they revert back to, to all that. My biggest advice is never get your, food, your child something different to eat. Mm -hmm. You give them what you're eating. If it's mm -hmm. a salad, you give them a little bit of your salad. Yes, if okay. it's grilled chicken, you give them grilled chicken. Right. Don't order them something off of the kid's meal. If you're having steak with vegetables as your side, you give them that. Right. Don't, don't give them options. Mm -hmm. When you give them options is when they become picky eaters because they're thinking, hmm. Oh, okay. She, if I tell her I don't want this and I want a grilled cheese, then she's going to give me a grilled cheese. I see. I, that's, that's how I've worked my son. It's, right. it's you're eating what I'm eating. I'm not making you something different. Right. And if you don't want it, you're going to be hungry. Right. And right. then they realize, oh, I should probably eat this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but, you know, they are obviously their own people like little personality so there are things that were they're very adamant that they just do not like right um and then you you'll know when they do not like something versus when they're being picky mm -hmm. and you'll be able to better you know understand your child right as opposed to just feeding them so that they can stop saying that they're hungry yeah which again i think that's that's why people just sort of give them whatever right. you want so you're basically saying you know in in a in in a way cut them off from this idea that they can just have whatever they want yeah. because they're never going to really, I mean, they're children. They're going to pick whatever, right. you know, um, that's interesting. I had a conversation with a friend of mine recently and I had said as much, he was like, well, you know, uh, my kid asked for, you know, chicken nuggets and fries. And, and, you know, this was like in the middle of me going crazy with my whole vegan thing. And I was like, that's crazy. You should never <laughs> let her choose. <laughs> what she wants it's true, you know man. and he was like well you know she likes this and that but i, I was sort of preaching you know to again mm -hmm. who am i preaching to because people just they mm -hmm. feel like they don't have the time they don't have the right. resources to sort of you know feed their kids uh healthier healthier options on that note mm. like eating produce produce is one of the only things in the supermarket that doesn't have a tax on it. So you mm. pay for what it is. Okay. When you buy the sugary stuff, you're paying all the extra tax and all this extra money. Right. Um, green markets that there, the Union Square market is like an all year round market. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the ones that pop up in local neighborhood areas, they accept EBT. Mm -hmm. And if that is your way of paying for your food, you get money back when you spend it in the green markets. So there is no excuse to not eating healthy foods right, right. because you're actually getting more money to buy more good food. That's awesome to know. Um, so a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they don't even bother to go to these stands or to go to these markets when you end up spending more in a supermarket than in a market fresh green market and uh speaking of healthy eats when we come back you'll be making some really delicious uh vegan tacos some beet vegan tacos yes wonderful all right guys grab yourselves a snack foodie down bronx we'll be right back Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm joined on set by Chef Ileana Manganiello. We're about to go in on some good vegan eats. All right, Chef, what you got for us? So today I'm going to make for you um, a really popular dish that I make at home. Uh, it's a vegan 
beet taco. Mm -hmm. So I make the tortillas myself. They are red, so they're beet oh, infused. I was not expecting that, okay. Yeah, so um, inside our taco filling is going to be some sauteed um, oyster mushrooms and some crispy potatoes. Then we have a fresh pico de gallo with some spring mix and we're going to make a cilantro avocado sauce. Mm. Yes. Delicious, 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 delicious. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Yes, so I'm just heating up my tortillas right now. Um, they're really easy to make, so if you make your tortillas at home, it's just masa harina with some water. Mm -hmm. But instead of using water, I use fresh beet juice. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you because you had said, oh, I'm going to prepare some beet tacos. And I'm like, sure, it'll be beets in the tacos. No. I didn't expect the actual shell to be No, no, that. the okay. beet is in the shell. Um, it's a really good way that I infuse nutri like nutrients for my son mm -hmm. because... He's very finicky on the veggies, so I gotta get ah, innovative so you, on hiding them him. in there. <laughs> you trick him, that's how you do it. Yes. Good move. So I'm just going to start by sauteing our mushrooms. Our potatoes are basically cooked. And with those, all I did was cut them into bite-sized pieces. And um, you can parboil them, so you just boil them until they're a little bit soft, mm -hmm. and then you finish them off in the skillet so that they get that nice crispy outer layer. So I just, uh, my pan is hot. And one of the tricks is you always, before you put any fat into the pan, you want your pan to be hot. You okay. don't want to put the oil when it's cold. Right. So then I'm gonna add some red onions that I have here and a little bit of garlic. Smells good already. Yeah, I'm gonna save my garlic because another misconception is people throw their garlic in first mm -hmm. when they throw in their onions, but if you enjoy the garlic flavor, right. you don't want it to get lost in everything else, so you okay. add it at the end. Okay, got it. Yeah, so I'm gonna add in our mushrooms. There goes those beautiful oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Those are so delicious. So, Besides this, which you're making for us right now, what are other sort of easy vegan recipes you can suggest for people at home? Um, so I also, my son loves pesto. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it without the cheese. So you just basically, if you have one of these mini choppers, it's super quick and easy to make. You can get really creative with it. I like to roast some tomatoes in it and add it with the basil. Or you can, instead of using all basil, you can add kale, arugula, right. any other type of green. Um, you can use walnuts as your fat, as your um, nut, because mm -hmm. pine nuts are very high in fat. Right. But if you are strictly on a vegan diet, you may need that fat, so that's a great way yes, to right. um, incorporate that into your diet. Um, another thing is I love uh, cauliflower. Love it. So I would make, my husband is big on like chino food sesame chicken. Yes. <laughs> but yes. I make that with cauliflower. Right. So I just basically um, red the cauliflower. I'll toss them in a little bit of um, breadcrumbs so mm -hmm. that they have like a crunchy outside. Right. And I, I'll pan fry them and I'll just make the glaze like I would for chicken. Soy sauce, ginger, fresh ginger, mm -hmm. fresh garlic. And then you just cook it down and create a really nice thick sauce and you throw some sesames over it. How about for like any uh, desserts? For any, because I see a couple of cakes on your Instagram. And I'm wondering yeah. if you have any sort of like healthy alternatives for, for cakes or for yeah, so I anything for, you know, the, the sweet tooth. So I make a really good chocolate cake. Um, to omit the egg, you would use applesauce. Oh, wow. Um, that okay. adds a really nice fluffiness to the cake. And you can use, um, what's the other alternative I've used? Another great recipe is, I'm trying to think. I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah, I'm, stuck, like a, I'm stuck on applesauce. I'm like, how does yeah, that even the work into really the equation? Adds, yeah, it's a really good egg substitute when baking. Really? Yeah. In general? In general, yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay. and if you don't want to use... Um, a really another good thing to make a rich chocolate cake is canned coconut milk because mm -hmm. okay. it has that nice fat and that thickness sure. that like a heavy cream or like a sour cream would give to the chocolate. Right, right. You can add that to it. And th those are basically my two go-tos when I'd make anything that's vegan or dairy-free. Mm -hmm. 
because it's really just a matter of getting you 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 want you want the consistency to stay the same. You right. don't want to taste like you're eating something that's vegan. Right. You right. know, you don't want to you don't want it to be flavorless. Right. So you want it to have that rich and that body and all that goodness. And so when you're home, what's what's the sort of menu consist of? Is it like um, a little bit of everything, like an yeah. omnivore sort of type of thing? I where am you an can, omnivore. <laughs> right, yes. I mean, I can say seven months pregnant that I eat about anything you put in front of my face. You're pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even... <laughs> um, so I will eat just about anything, but we're really trying to transition. As I was telling you earlier, my son, he is a big... Um, He's a big dairy eater, so I'm really trying to change right. that aspect of things. We've transitioned from, he loves yogurt, mm -hmm. so I've gotten him off of yogurt completely, and I right. use the So Delicious coconut yes. yogurt. Right. Um, I find that the ones that have flavor in them can be high in sugar, mm. but I just get the unsweetened one, and it has very little to no sugar, and he loves right. it, and I just load it up with fruit, and he doesn't even notice that it's coconut yogurt. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people have to trick me too into like <laughs> eating certain foods <laughs> and not having me notice anything. So what do we have here in the skillet right now? So in the skillet we have, we're just heating up our potatoes and okay. getting them a little extra crunchy. Awesome. So I'm going to load up our beet tacos now. Beautiful just... beet taco shells. Yes. It looks so unique, I love that. Yeah, I love cooking with color. That's like my thing. It's what I'm known for. If you look on my Instagram, all of my food is very colorful. Right. I feel like, especially with kids, you have to make it look appetizing. I mean, and as adults, who wants to eat something that doesn't look good? That's so true. It's like we, we definitely we definitely eat with our eyes. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, we it's definitely always a do. plus if your food is colorful and fun to look we at. We definitely do. One That's of the sure. biggest things, too, that I find in when I was trying to live a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle is I lived off of sauces. Mm. So sauces were like my everything. So I'm gonna show you how to make this really quick sauce. So I have about a half an avocado there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze up some lemon juice, some lime juice, excuse me. About a half a lime, add that. And I have my cilantro here. And to sweeten it, we'll put one clove of garlic in it. And we're gonna add some oil. And another good way is you can add the unsweetened coconut yogurt mm -hmm. as um, some recipes have Greek yogurt in it. Right. So you can add that as an alternative. And then we're just going to Add some water to this to help it out a little bit. And you end up with like a really nice thick sauce. Looks awesome. Yes. So I'm just going to plate everything really quickly so that you can try it all together. I'm excited. <laughs> This is my, definitely my first beet taco. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure Add I some will. potatoes. Mm. The potatoes alone smell amazing. I love potatoes, any kind, sweet potato, regular. I love carbs in general. Yeah, same. Beautiful. All right, guys, so stay connected with Chef Ileana Manginello yeah. on Instagram at Chef underscore Ileana. Well, that's all for the show, guys. Thank you again for tuning in, and thank you to our guests today for joining us. Tune in every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. here on BronxNet Optimum 67 and Fios 33. Also, tune in on the go at BronxNet.org and find us on YouTube. From BronxNet to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Remember to feed your mind, feed your body, and if you see me coming along, feed me. Adios. <laughs>